Hello, today we're going to take a look at Photoshop Generative Fill. We're going to see why it sucks and what we can do to get around the problem. So here we go. I was planning on using this stock photo as the background layer for a thumbnail on a real estate video I did. The only thing I needed was a for sale sign in the yard and I'm thinking Generative Fill would be the way to go. Now this is the text layer that I used over the background, so I went ahead and copied the text out to a separate transparent layer. Now to generate the for sale sign, I used the marquee tool to draw a rectangle in the yard, and I then selected generative fill and typed in real estate for sale sign. These are the three results I got. That one is clearly not suitable. The second one's not too bad, but the third one is just as bad as the first. So let's try one more time and see if it comes up with anything better. Well, no, that's not too good, and that's no better. And at this point, I determined that generative fill sucks. Quite clearly, this is not working for what I wanted, so I'll just give up. There's no need to save this, so I'll just get rid of it. And we'll go out and get a different stock photo and give it another shot. This is the one I picked, so now I'll insert it into the thumbnail canvas. As you can see, it's way too large, so I'll rescale it to fit. That looks like a good size, so now I'll bring it down under the text layer so they're both visible. I always bring the opacity of the background layer way down to highlight the text layer, but the problem with this one is the open house signs directly behind most of the text for my thumbnail. So to fix that, I'm going to resize the image some more and scoot it over to the left so that it's not interfering with the thumbnail text. Now that I've got the open house sign pretty much out of the way, the problem I have is all this white space surrounding the background. To fix that, I'm going to use the marquee tool again and select all of the white space. I'll use generative fill and this time I won't give it any instructions. I'll just let it fill in the borders the way it sees fit. That looks marvelous. I like it a lot. Let's zoom in a little bit to take a closer look. I don't even need to look at the other two options, but since Photoshop went to the trouble of making them for me, I guess I'll at least take a look. Nah. Nah. I like that one better, so that's what I'm going with. Now since I added a generative fill layer to the sign layer, I need to merge those together by selecting Merge Visible Layers, and this will leave me with just the one layer to work with. So next I'll bring the opacity on this layer down to allow the text layer to stand out. And now that I've done that, all I've got to do is save a copy as a JPEG, and I have my thumbnail ready to use with my real estate video. So as you can see, Generative Fill works great most of the time. It's really great at removing objects from an image and also pretty daggum good at inserting objects into an image. The only real problem I've had is inserting signs. Now why this should be such a problem, I don't know, but that's what I found. So let me know what you think in the comments. And if you got some good value out of this video, please like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.